Welcome to the audiobook reading of Calculating How Big of a Tip to Give is the Easiest Thing Ever. Shout out to my family and friends. It was self published by me, Steve Rogenbuck, in February 2015. The correct name for a bunch of bananas is a hand, and a single banana is called a finger. Sarah was one year old. Little baby, wah wah. <laughs> Too bad for her. I'm older. I'm 14. I am 14 and four months. I was born during a meteor shower and it shows in my personality. Wah wah. Cry about it. Take it to the bank. See if they can cash it for you. I was born during a meteor shower and it shows in daily life. Anyhow, Sarah grew up eventually. She turned 13. Then she got in a 13 going on 30 type thing and she was even older ages. Eventually she grew to the age of, get this, 35. Wow. More weird stuff happened. Blah, blah, whatever. Then she was 50. Corn grew. Trucks drove with corn all over the world. Trucks drove with soybeans. Trucks drove with natural gas. Coffee beans, cow manure. Global warming got worse. Sarah turned 60. People suffered. Hurricanes. Gazelles ran. Gazelles drank water. Lions ate gazelles. Some of the gazelles got away for a while. The sky went from dark to light and back to dark over 12,000 times. Sarah was alive. Sarah was alive and it was beautiful and hard. Sarah got away for a while. Then Sarah was 90 or something. Then Sarah was dead. Sarah was dead and it was beautiful and hard. Sarah got away for a long time then. The end. I had a nightmare in which Zac Efron talked into a pizza to communicate to his dead lover. The time is 7.06 a.m. Wow. Silent morning hours. It is arguably the closest time to the impossible but most satanic time of day, 6.66 a.m. Suddenly Marina wakes from the longest sleep of her life, approximately seven hours and looks directly up and screams, It's time to live my life! Immediately, four clowns break into the room and start masturbating flippantly while skipping around the room, yodeling and screaming. Marina picks up a sawed-off shotgun from her nightstand and shoots it directly upward five times. Suddenly, a black and white cow enters the room and starts levitating into the middle of the air. The cow has the head of an extremely large human toddler, not a cow's head. Suddenly, everything freezes, and a white light starts emanating from the center of the cow. It grows stronger and stronger, pulsing outward through the skin of the cow, until the room is completely plastered in white light. Then, Keanu Reeves walks into the room. He is holding a memory card from an N64. He says, when I was 22 years old, I saved my game on 007 Goldeneye at the exact moment before my character got killed by the small but ruthless villain Odd Job. Whenever I need a reminder that human life is fleeting, that everything is temporary and most of the processes at work in the universe are beyond my control, I load this game. Keanu then starts crying. By now, the white light of the cow has almost completely enveloped Keanu as well. We don't have that long together. I wish we had longer. The white light takes him, and he is gone. The end. I want to have sex with Will Smith watching. Hi, Merle. You're looking hot as heck today, good dog. That is what Michael said today when he woke up in life to see his cute and sexy dog Merle bear it all on national TV. What a nice day to be alive. Michael pours a hot cup of coffee into his bedsheets. 
There's no point to stay calm about life, Michael thinks now. There's absolutely no reason. Just go buck wild most of the time, hee hee. That is Michael's thought process now. But there's a backstory of how this happened. Well, Merle was at a 100% gluten-free grocery store once to buy loaves of non-GMO rice bread. A wizard approached Merle with a gun and said, Choose your destiny. Merle said without any pause at all, I wish to be a stripper on cable TV. The wizard said, that's not what I meant. Also, I'm not a wizard, I'm just the guy who's robbing you. But then, Michael stepped out from behind a tall pile of bread, holding a sword. Wait one second, Michael says, attempting to save Merle's life. The robber slash wizard says, who in heck are you? Michael says, I'm God's child. And then a gamma ray burst coming from light years away happens to hit the earth directly and suddenly everything is on fire and everyone is screaming and within one minute everyone on earth is dead. The end. I can probably get a horse to kill me. Once upon a time there was Shanna. Shanna was a practicer of dark and evil Satanism. Well, the weird thing about Shanna is that she built completely Satanist fucking dirt bikes. Hmm, okay, you may ask, what does that even mean? What is even a difference between Christian motocross and Satanic motocross? How do you even know if you're hailing Satan with your bike? Just how do you really know? Well, Shanna was a postmodern motorcycle mechanic. Her work on motorcycles raised these questions without necessarily answering them. Okay, well, one day, God came into Shanna's auto garage. God said, okay, Shanna, I see you have talent like none other. Even though you make satanic ATVs and off-roading vehicles, I just gotta ask that you build a divine and Christian jet ski for me and my friends. Can you please? I have unlimited money and also everything else. Shanna said, heck no, I hail Satan only, (laughs) hee hee, the end. Just kidding, it's not over. God said back, hmm, what if I make Vin Diesel your husband and life love? Shanna said, no way, I only love Vin Diesel as a friend, that's gross. God said, you're weird. Then Shanna said, Okay, never mind. I want to be married to Vin Diesel. Then Shanna made the best Christian jet ski that was ever made. And God had so much fun in the water. Everyone who saw said, Who's that little water bug? Hee <laughs> hee. And it turned out, that's God. The end. The roars of lions can be heard from over five miles away. This story includes two characters named Hanno, one of which is spelled with an H on the end and one of which is not. So you'll just have to figure that out. Hanno walks over to Hannah's bike. The two of them have never met before this. Hannah bends over and bites the front tire of Hannah's bike until it pops. Wow. Okay. It is really loud and it seems horrible to experience from such close distance. What the heck, Hannah? Come on, that's weird. (laughs) He. Hannah is not happy that her bike tire got popped in front of her own eyes. Ha ha. So she pulls out an atomic bomb. She says, I will fucking use this on you. (laughs) He he. But Hannah is running away now, saying, Eat shit. (laughs) He he. I know you like Daddy Daycare too. One of the worst movies. I read your review of it on Rotten Tomatoes, hee <laughs> hee. But Hannah is shocked by this and she calls back with a plea. Wait one second, hee <laughs> hee. I did not like Daddy Daycare too. I only like Daddy Daycare, the original. It was much better. Daddy Daycare 2 moved way too fast. 
I didn't feel invested in the characters or their struggles at all. Hannah stops running away. She looks back and sheds a tear as she says, Wow, I had you all wrong. Hee <laughs> hee. I'm sorry. Can we fall in love? And Hannah says back, Yeah. Then they come together in a perfect kiss. They look like penguins doing it, or, or swan or some bird, I don't know. It's nice. They have a similar name and they feel the same about Daddy Daycare. It's probably going to be a really long-lasting and perfect relationship. They'll probably be happy forever. Twist my poop into a fractal. Once upon a time, Catherine was doing just fine. Ha 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 ha. Well, that was a long time ago. Right now, she is freaking hell out of here because she's got mole rats. Surprise! Catherine's home was taken over by mole rats. Ah! Mole rats! That is an exact quote of Catherine. Every day of her life now. This is a hell that few could endure. Catherine actually can endure it, but she does not like to. It's hard. And what's the worst part? It's making her dislike mole rats. Catherine used to love mole rats. She was a champion of mole rat love. But as we all know, there does come a time in all our lives when your home, your place of work, or indeed your whole life, become such a mole rat infested hell. You can't help but lose some of your overall enthusiasm for mole rats. It sucks, but this is our life. We are human beings. We are born, we have problems, we die. Rest in peace, Paul Walker, 1973 to 2013. People's usual reaction to seeing a cute animal is saying they want to own it. That's a nice ass horse. I love horses. Patch says this while masturbating to a picture of two humans, no horse in sight. Patch's brother Bobby overhears this from the next room and excitedly opens the door to Patch's room saying, Please Patch, I love horses. Patch openly keeps masturbating and just says, No, Bobby, this is my horse photography I took on vacation to South Dakota. Bobby is not at all fazed by the fact that Patch is masturbating, and he doesn't even seem upset about the horse photography. In fact, Bobby takes out his cell phone to make a completely unrelated phone call while still standing in the room. Hello? Yes. Existing customer. I would like to renew my subscription. Patch gets up and emotionlessly runs and just jumps through the glass window in his room, smashing outward into the sky. Patch opens up an umbrella to help him float down to the ground, which is like a mile downward. He does it like it is routine and nothing different from a usual day. When he lands, it's a forest. It is the Amazon rainforest. What? Patch, why do you live here? Come on. Hey, Patch, are you contributing to deforestation? Patch says, I don't know. He, he, maybe. What? Come on, Patch. That's really bad. N don't. Come on. Do you promise you didn't mean it at least? Okay, Patch says. I promise. Nice. Thanks, Patch. The end. Honeybees have sex while flying through the air, and if the sex is successful, then the male bee's penis rips off and he dies. Hold on, I'm looking at a pic of Chester Bennington of Lincoln Park, nude and bearing it all. He <laughs> he. Dan says that out loud to seemingly no one in his rural Alabama home. 
Somehow, Dan has been living in a basketball arena alone for over 1,000 years. I've been watching him every day, and it has been very boring. Dan's life wasn't always this lonely, though. He used to live with over 500,000 goth dads in a goth dad co-housing community that's a GDCC. Dan often recalls those as his finest years of life. Anyway, suddenly on this night, Dan says something very out of character for himself. Dan says, I want to drink Mountain Dew. Haha, -ha. tonight. I love to do the Dew. I'm getting very concerned at this point, and I actually decide in a split-second decision to reveal to Dan that I've been watching him in his home for over 1,000 years to write this story. No bad intentions, of course, but I've been literally spying into Dan's home for 1,000 plus years. Anyway, I tell him, Dan, don't drink Mountain Dew. It's going to make your body feel horrible, and it's going to pump money into unsustainable systems set up by a corporation that honestly doesn't care about you or any humans at all but themselves. Well, instantly, Dan is infuriated by this. He yells at the highest pitch possible. He takes out a pistol and starts shooting down all the chandeliers in his home, which is actually a ton of chandeliers, about 37,000. He actually takes out an atomic bomb. He holds it over his head, ready to kill all. Dan, I say, calm down, he he. Actually, your individual consumption of Mountain Dew on this night is almost nothing in the broad scheme of things in terms of financial or health reasons. If you want to drink Mountain Dew tonight, then go ahead, Dan. But it doesn't work. Dan keeps yelling at an extremely high pitch, and, and he turns on ACDC back in black very loud over 7,000 decibels. And he also strips down to get fully naked now. It is then that I see Dan's enormous Linkin Park back tattoo. It is the cover of their breakout album, Hybrid Theory. Full color, amazing detail. And in that moment, I am proud of this man more than I have ever been proud of anyone in my life. The end. Santa Claus is coming to town? More like Santa Claus 2 is coming to town, lol. Once upon a time, there was a person named Kirsten, who was 90. Well, she was farming outside in 11,000 degree hot weather. It was dang hot, and Kirsten kept saying slang words like, This is scorching. This is very warm. Hot mama, that is what I call hot. And this is too hot. I'm scared of becoming dehydrated or getting heat stroke. Lastly, she said, I'm burning up like a Jonas. It was really weird of her. But some local newscasters got word of her catchy sayings, and they actually honored her as a local spoken word author. Kirsten got a book deal on Penguin Classics. Her book was called... I love calculator. It's a math book. Wow. What's her secret? I don't know. The end. Attack my dad with a bunch of candles. There's a sick fuck named Glenn. Glenn likes eating pulp from juicers. It's weird. I don't trust him. Anyway... Glenn has a problem. He loves the moon, sexually, romantically, whatever. He wants to have its babies. Ooh. Glenn writes love letter to the moon all the time. They say, shine your hot ass light down on my broke ass. Hee <laughs> hee. I'm broke for you. Wow. Come on, Glenn. Get it together. Are you serious? Anyway... One day, Glenn's pals Connor and Pippin come over to play. They shoot at Glenn with BB guns and he runs around saying, Don't! It's their favorite game. At night, they sit around a fire, saying their deepest secrets on life. Pippin says, 
I have a pet baby. I got a baby human that I use as a pet in my home. Wow. Unexpected. Kind of dark. Connor says, I love getting whacked with bamboo paddles on my neck. Before anyone can fully react to that, a dead clown falls out of a passing helicopter and lands very near to Glenn and Pippin. Ah! Glenn turns around and immediately says, I need to go buy tortilla chips now! Then, suddenly, for unrelated reasons, a bison appears, charging directly at Glenn. Ah! Glenn shouts again, but then Pippin uses his wristwatch to stop time, saving Glenn! What? What? How? I don't know. I really don't know. But stay with me. This has got to get resolved somehow. The end. Almost all rain starts as snow when it's leaving the cloud. Then it melts on the way down. The best person ever at creating blogspot accounts was named Clay. Hmm, how is he good? How is that something to really have skill at? That is what a hater would tell you. But if you ever got to watch Glenn at work, then you know. This is a talent, he he. This is unreal. His movements are unpredictable, but totally intuitive once you see them. The usernames he selects are extremely interesting. Satanistdadconvent.blogspot.com BelieberDadConvent.blogspot.com DubstepDadConvent.blogspot.com One of Clay's favorite quotes of all time was in Fight Club. In that movie, when Brad Pitt refers to Edward Norton's dad having multiple families, he says, Fuckers setting up franchises. That really inspired Clay. Because, well, for some reason it did. Anyway, Clay ran into trouble one day when he tried to create Kanye West Dad Convent.blogspot.com and it was already taken by an actually Kanye West Dad Convent. That, that was very frightening and what is really going on in the Kanye West Dad Convent? Someone call authorities. Well, just kidding. Don't call them. Well, Clay went to the convent in South Alaska. Clay found out how to learn a lot about Kanye West and all about himself too. The convent was very similar to the gathering of Juggalos, except it was dads. And well, Kanye West was there, just kind of hanging out. Well, Clay met Kanye West at the convent and they became very good friends. After about 510 years of being close friends, Kanye West said, Clay, I'm going to do something very weird, lol, but you have to trust me. I'm going to give you my dead face after I die, so you can wear my face as a mask and basically get anything you want in life because you're Kanye West, lol. Clay said, hmm, seems interesting. Kanye said, what? You're not grateful? And Kanye West took out a bazooka missile and shot Clay. But Clay had a copy of the Bible in his shirt pocket, exactly where the missile hit him. The Bible dampened the missile impact enough that Clay still lives to this day. He <laughs> he. Clay has currently made over 15,000 blogspot accounts, and he is recognized around the world when he goes in public. Not as Kanye West but as Clay, the best creator of Blogspot accounts in the whole entire world. The lesson of the story is don't be somebody else, be yourself, the end. Carrots are 88% water, but that's nothing compared to radishes. Radishes are 95% water. Once upon a time, there was someone called Alex. Alex was confused for a long time about what to do in life, as most reasonable people are. There are a lot of things to do, and how do you even choose? Well, Alex sat in true and rare shade of a carrot tree one day, thinking on life, 
looking into the waning sun, staring directly on the sun to gain insights. Hmm, how to help human beings and also enjoy the time of life, lol. Well, then something amazing happened. A ripe carrot fell off a branch and popped Alex on top of the knee. It was utterly precious. It's just so completely beautiful whenever that happens to anyone, and especially to Alex. Trust me, you should have been there to see it. I'm sorry. Alex said to himself sitting there, Wow, okay. Carrot farming, it's my career. And it turned out to be a good idea. Alex got a PhD in carrots. Then he and his fucked up dog, Marcel, helped to make over 14 billion schools <laughs> where the children gain access to free carrots all day. Wow. The schools are called Vitamin A+. Plus. <laughs> what a name. Well, cool, Alex. Nice job. I would now like to invite you to be profiled on HGTV television channel. Do you accept? I hope you say yes. Yes, I accept, Alex said. Oh, oh my god. This is the most cool moment that has ever happened. I can't believe this. Someone, please kill me. The end. If you kept a log of when you pooped, it would be called a poop log. <laughs> Ryan is one of the only militant moon lovers on Earth. There was a dark time in Ryan's past when he was known primarily for killing someone and all their extended family members for saying they didn't see what is the big deal about the moon. Well, eventually all that blew over. But still, not too many people can relate to Ryan's level of lunar passion. Some can, but not many. One day, Ryan started a militant mood moon advocacy group called we would have sex with the moon if possible. W-W-H-S-W-T-M-I-P. Only three people came. Connor, Tommy, and Pippin. On the first day of the group, they, they went around and said their favorite aspects of the moon. Connor started off. I like that all the moon phases do something different for me. The full moon is cool because that's when everybody's paying attention to the moon, not just me. So it's more like a party, and the brightness is just breathtaking. Wax and Gibbous is probably actually my favorite because it's like the hours leading up to that big party. Sometimes the anticipation can be better than the party itself. I also love Wax and Crescent because its position as the first phase after the new moon is like, thank you God the moon is back, I missed it so much. I love Waning Crescent because it's the last phase and I'm forced to appreciate the last days of the moon before it disappears into New Moon. New Moon has value even though it is just an absence because heck, it gives the Waxing and Waning Crescent all their meaning. Nah, I used to think that Waning Gibbous was the only bad phase because it's so weak and difficult to appreciate it right after the thrill of the full moon. It's like the hangover after a big party, right? But now I see that waning gibbous is a spiritual challenge for myself. Can I appreciate this weak-ass moon phase, even though its gift is much more subtle than the rest? I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you can appreciate a waning gibbous, you can appreciate anything. And that means sitting, breathing, walking. You could appreciate the most boring and simple parts of life. Practice appreciation by loving a waning gibbous. Hmm. That's a pretty cool answer that Connor gave. Then it was Tommy's turn to say his favorite moon aspect. Tommy said, I love the man in the moon. I think it's cool. There was a silence as the rest of the group waited for him to continue. When he did continue, it was obvious they had a fraud in their midst. Ryan pulled out a bazooka missile and shot Tommy 25 times in a row, in the face, with the bazooka. WWHSWTMIP still meets up to present day. Be careful what you say about the moon. When you point two Furbies at each other, they start talking to each other because they can recognize the other Furby is there. 
Once in time, there was a real human-sized Furby named David. Haha, <laughs> actual Furby? You probably don't believe. Okay, well then I try a different story. My friend's mom had two Furbies when I was 19 and I visited their house. My friend's mom said, I love my Furby. Haha, <laughs> I fucking actually love this. Boing boing, ha 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 ha, boing boing boing, ha ha ha. Okay. Well, I have another story I'm telling now. I changed again. Mothers aren't paid for the incredible amount of labor they put into raising children. In most heterosexual marriages, women are expected to do the unpaid labor of taking care of children and running the house while men go earn money, which allows for actual purchasing power in society, like for food and rent. So it often feels like the woman is dependent on her husband for support, but actually the woman did just as much labor as the man, oftentimes more because raising children is very hard and sometimes she has another job too and is still expected to do most of the child raising. So let's just take a moment to recognize that the women in our lives have often worked even harder than the men, but gotten very little recognition or power to run their own lives from it. The end. It would be in the interest of almost every species on earth for human beings to die off as soon as possible. Once upon time, in the 90s, there was an initiative by the U.S. government to put a whale in every household. It was actually a joke law made by Bill Clinton. It was a very bad idea. It was never meant to be an actual good idea, just a joke idea, but for some reason they actually put it into law. Well, the whales became a problem very quickly. Almost all the whales died very soon because people didn't have knowledge or resources to care for a whale. And then, what do you do with a dead whale inside your home? What do you really do? It starts smelling very soon after death. Well, Daniel thought of a way to dispose of the dead whales by putting them in space. It seemed funnier than burying them in the ground, so it was successfully passed into law. Daniel built a very big catapult to launch a dead whale to space. You simply drop two dead whales on one side of the catapult, and it launches the other dead whale to space. Well... There's nothing else I wish to say about this. The end. What if my dad had a wingspan? Once upon a time, there was a girl named Savy who loved avocados a lot. Well, she was on death row because she killed 400 cops. But this story is not about that. This story is about a totally separate time in Savy's life. She was sitting around her home, chewing rabbit food and shuffling decks of cards to make sure they were totally shuffled. It was her job. She was thinking, wow, I hate this a lot, hee <laughs> hee, shuffling cards for a living. Why am I eating rabbit food? All of a sudden, a lot of clowns enter the room. This is not a big surprise to Savy at first, but they keep coming. There gets to be more than 15 clowns. There is loud Toby Keith country music playing out of their clown car. Savy knows something is up. These are not usual clowns. This is the Republican clown posse. Savy is scared now. She grabs a machete and screams at the top of her lungs, God help me! You clowns! If you are pro-life clowns, I will kill every last one of you! Immediately, the Toby Keith country music stops. Most of the clowns freeze in utter fear of death. You can only hear one of the distant clowns longboarding through Savy's kitchen. There is a crescent moon in the sky. Toby Keith is 52 years old. All of our lives will eventually end and nobody knows when. Lemur Basics Whales seem very loving. I feel loved when I am around whales. That is what Vika has tattooed on her upper back. 
Vika has a great love for getting multiple full sentences as tattoos, especially on the subject of whales. Vika recently got the following whale fact tattooed on her leg also. Quote, Whales love to sing. They use their songs as a call to mates, a way to communicate, and just for fun. After a period of time, they get bored of the same whale song and begin to sing a different tune. Wow, that's an amazing whale fact, and an amazing tattoo. Vika's friend Brendan is also pretty good at getting multiple sentence tattoos, although he focuses more on lemur-based material. This is what Brendan recently got as a chest piece tattoo. Quote, lemurs do not have prehensile tails, therefore they cannot hang from their tails in trees like monkeys. However, they do have long, wet noses. Wow, I'm impressed. After Brennan got that tattoo, the next day he got a letter in the mail saying, you have won a Nobel Peace Prize. Wow, and he got another letter saying, you won National Book Award too. Oh my God, since when does that happen? National Book Prize? He didn't even write a book. And a Peace Award, wow. Now that's the power of lemurs. Lemurs do have power, for once. Lemurs seem to have power. This is great news. Oh, wow. Should I tell my parents? Hmm. Yes. Yes, absolutely. You should tell your parents. You should tell them that lemurs are here and here to stay. No, no. Tell them more. Tell them that lemurs are the basis of everything good in my life. Tell them I am so glad to share this earth with lemurs and I would die for lemurs. In fact, Tell them that I hope and crave to die in a way that benefits lemurs as soon as possible. Thank you. The end. At parties, my main focus is high-fiving people and telling them they're doing a great job. Once there was a woman named Amy who run a restaurant. The main point of the restaurant is that anything can happen in there. It's not predictable. Sometimes they would even break legal restrictions with this, like they would have an actual dead horse fall from the ceiling during lunch because that's really unexpected. And it makes all the visitors feel like, wow, I will never forget this moment. That's what Amy likes to chase. In any given stretch of time, like a month or week, she realized she could intentionally increase the amount of memorable experiences she had by just constantly seeking new and bizarre situations. And then she will have more distinct memories she can remember, and then when she is looking back on her life, it will seem like it was longer. Hehe. <laughs> Amy's husband, Sean, was an inspiration, too. He was good at this. Sean did all this in one week. One put his hand inside of a dead orangutan's mouth. Two, put his hand inside of a dead koala bear's dead hand skin. Three, put his whole leg inside of a dead Great Dane. He was pretty good. But Amy is great at bringing this into the food service industry specifically. One mom's testimonial said, it was really scary when the waiter brought us a dead lawyer instead of food. But later I realized I will never forget that moment. The look of fear and confusion on my children's faces. We had a moment together that will last forever for us. Other days keep coming and going with nothing memorable, but that day in the restaurant is forever. Thank you, Amy, so much. You're the most important person in my life. I love you, Amy. Will you marry me? And Amy actually said yes to that, even though she's already married. The end. Newborn wildebeests can often stand within three minutes of being born and run within 20. 
Catherine wakes up to the sound of 250,000 woodpeckers pecking wood. Oh no. Oh dear God. Catherine's home has been selected as a target by a team of home wrecking woodpeckers. Home peckers. This is, this is pretty bad news. Catherine opens a window near a woodpecker leader and she says, hi, please stop and go away from my home. The woodpecker looks up and just says, no, he he. Catherine gets mad at that. What the heck? She was polite and they laughed. Catherine picks up the phone and dials 911. 911 answers and says, hello, what you emergency? Catherine screams woodpeckers and hangs up. She is very afraid. Catherine once watched a documentary that said, in six days, a team of woodpeckers can peck down a house. But then, Catherine remembers something else from the documentary too. Woodpeckers cannot turn down offers for payday loans. They absolutely love payday loans and auto title loans. Well, Catherine had to look up what payday lending is. And what she learned is that it's actually an industry specifically designed to profit off, profit off of poor people and make them significantly worse off than they already were. When you take out a payday loan, you get some money in advance of your paycheck, like a few weeks in advance. But then if you fail to pay it back on time, the interest rate is so high that you can quickly owe like a very high amount. It seems like one of the worst things to exist in the world because it specifically targets people in poor neighborhoods who are already struggling. The companies that give out payday loans seem like extremely evil, but for some reason our economic system actually allows and also rewards this behavior from them. It seems so horrible. The end. I would honestly watch Kid Rock jack off, it doesn't even matter. That's a picture of my female cat sucking off her husband cat. It was something Benjamin's dentist said earlier that day. It didn't seem like a surprising sentence when he initially heard it, but later at home, eating non-GMO corn tortillas and watching XFL football reruns, he thought out loud, Hey, asshole, cats don't engage with the institution of marriage. Who's to say that those cats are married or even that they've entered into a monogamous or committed relationship at all? Suddenly, beautiful adult squirrels begin to enter the room, one by one, for a really long time, until there's exactly 3,000 squirrels in the room. Wow, they barely fit. The room had the exact amount of space required to fit 3,000 adult squirrels. Who said there's no such thing as perfection? The end. Set my poop onto a cobweb so gently that it doesn't break. Mario wakes up and he is currently surfing a large wave. Wow. That does not usually happen. Usually you wake up and well, you're lying down or possibly sitting, but this truly twisted soul, Mario, is surfing. And actually, he's, he's playing guitar while surfing. This is just not how you wake up. But here you go, Mario did it. Well, Mario gets onto the shore and says, that was a good night's sleep. I'm fly as fuck. I'm also an organic farmer who loves his family deeply. Mario walks to the corner store. He puts 12 bananas on the counter to buy them. The clerk says, wow, you are awesome. Mario says, every member of my family is a professional athlete and I own a necklace made of pure human leg. Mario walks outside. He eats 12 bananas while, the, while watching the tide roll in. All of a sudden, an alien space pod lands on the beach next to him. Mario says, oh, it seems that an alien space pod has landed next to me. An alien gets out and says, hey Mario, take me to your leader, lol. But Mario says, nice try, alien. 
I have a degree in hotel management from Drexel University. And with my power, I order you to leave Earth. The alien says, okay. And the aliens leave. Wow. Mario is inspired by his own success in this moment. So he goes home and becomes a professional eBay seller. He lives happy ever after until he dies from getting hit by a very fast whale. Banana nutrition facts. 12 bananas. 1,260 calories. 320 grams carbs. 15 grams protein. 5 grams fat. 37 grams fiber, 1,060 grams water, 5,000 milligrams potassium, 120 milligrams vitamin C, 4 milligrams manganese, 380 milligrams magnesium, 1 milligram riboflavin, 9 milligrams vitamin B3, 5 milligrams vitamin B6, 1.1 milligrams copper, 4 milligrams iron, the end. A space heater would have to be huge. Well, it's time to clean my dad, Renee says, pouring the blood of a dead priest from a mason jar into a one liter Voss water bottle in her kitchen. Renee's dad seems normal in almost all regards, but he has somehow convinced his family and close friends to take turns cleaning him with the blood of dead holy men. Also, Renee's dad is nicknamed the Human Car Alarm, because when people scare him, he makes loud car alarm sounds and it takes over five minutes to get him to stop. Well, anyway, on this day, Renee approaches her dad, and Renee is wearing a monocle for some reason. Actually, there is no reason I take that back, and she is holding the blood bottle. Anyway, her dad is scared by the monocle, and Renee's dad starts making car alarm sounds very loudly. It's awkward. It seems really immature of him, but it's actually just a reaction, like an allergy. Nothing he can do about it. Well, Renee's mom walks in from the other room. She says, Dear God, Renee, what did you do now? To the human car alarm, our dear father. All of a sudden, a dead clown falls out of the ceiling of their home, onto the sofa next to Renee's dad. Everyone goes silent. There is a note in the dead clown's hand. Renee says, Now what could that little note say? She goes over to look at it. The note says, He he. Nothing else. The end. How many Creed neck tattoos is it going to take? Ha <laughs> ha. I love to receive million dollar in my home. <laughs> this is what Denise says into her little flip phone walking on a treadmill. Haha. <laughs> Denise won the million dollar lottery. I can't believe this. Oh my god. Fuck. She actually won? What the fuck? Woohoo! Hee <laughs> yeah! Wow! Wait. No. No, actually I am kidding. Denise wakes up and she does not have one million. She says into the mid-October soft and tender wind, I like having one million though. Dave is next to her. Dave says into mid-February air, Denise, what would you even do with one million USD? Denise says, I would pay a horse trainer to kill Guy Fieri's whole family and friend group with a blowtorch. The water laps at their toes. Dave says, I can get you that for 10000 Dave is smoking toothpaste currently, rolled up in $20 bills. He is smoking the bills and paste together. Denise says, are you joking, though? 
Dave says, Denise, I'm smoking toothpaste currently. <laughs> Do you think I would joke right now? Jesus Christ is silent for one hour. They just stand there for one hour not talking. After one hour, Dave continues. It's for the... <laughs> it's for the fluoride. It's... If you... <laughs> it's for the fluoride. If you smoke fluoride, it has health benefits. I heard that. On fucking CNN. I definitely heard that. There is just the dead silent air around them. And across the world. 70 miles away, someone is playing a game of tag with their sister. 200 miles away, someone is having sex for the first time. Bananas are not the highest source of potassium, although they are high. Right now, more than 100 human beings are in the last minute of their life. The first sign of dehydration is not thirst. It is fatigue. Wow, some of these stories that I have not read live as much are still newer to me or I've forgotten certain parts and they're making me crack up. Hope that doesn't bother you. Um, Together we can burn down John Mayer's home. Julia loves trees so much. One day she climbed a tree and it was so high it went to the moon. Then she was on the moon and she said, wow. Truly. This is truly fucked up. I am now on moon. Wow. Very rare. I love this. This is truly fantastic for me. She started a new country called Moon Country. Cool. Well, now it was 10 p.m. and Julia was tired. She needed to eat popcorn, then go to sleep. Julia said, Damn, this day has been so top-notch for me. I love today. Then she went to sleep. She was perfect while she slept, and perfect when she woke up. Julia was perfect forever. The end. White Owl dropped that 79. Let's go see Ozzy Osbourne live. I love the philosophy of his music. Amanda says this to the cat she lives with, who is named Blanket. Well, Amanda calls Ticketmaster. She gets on the line with the live representative. She says, I'm taking my cat with me to see Ozzy Osbourne. I hope he signs an autograph. She hangs up. Amanda did not buy tickets on the phone call. Amanda goes online. She buys a motorcycle on eBay. Then, Amanda buys a motorcycle on Craigslist. Then, Amanda buys a homemade motorcycle on Etsy. Outside, there is hard rain getting pushed by wind, hitting the windows and the sides of the house. It sounds amazing on the sides of the house. Rain sounds amazing when it hits almost any surface. Suddenly now, in this moment, Blanket, a previously non-speaking cat, actually starts to speak. What? This is a very rare treat. Let's listen in. Hey Amanda, and all of you watching at home, I just wanted to say something. We all get fears and disempowering thoughts which may prevent us from taking action on the things we really care about. Fear of failure, fear of what others might think of us, or feelings like maybe we don't actually deserve something we want, etc., etc. But if we can just acknowledge those fears and disempowering thoughts for what they are, thoughts in our head, not truths in the world, then that gives us a little space in which we can decide not to act on them. Then we have space to choose to act in alignment with our values and long-term goals instead of our fears. Then we have space to choose to be brave. Wow. I actually really like that. It sounds corny, but I think that could, that could actually benefit me a lot. I want to be brave if I can. Thanks, Blanket. The end.
poop into a champagne flute so it fills the exact diameter. Some people just don't know any shit at all about the moon. Renee says this while scrolling through Reddit, sitting in his bed. There are very few moon-related posts, as usual. If only people knew shit. Renee sighs. Then, a bear breaks through the door into Renee's room. What? A bear is here? Now that is what I call unlikely. The bear roars and eats a fish. What? The bear had a fish already with them? That is amazing. Renee says, wow. Now I was not expecting that, especially the fish part. After a minute or so, the bear lumbers out and Renee is still in his bed. Hmm, now how can we increase moon fact awareness among the public? Renee pulls up Yahoo News. First let me see what is going on in world news. I love to look at Yahoo for my world news needs. Renee says this aloud to no one. It's a little weird, but I think that's chill. I like that aspect about Renee. But now, you won't believe what happens next. A caribou walks through the open door, going in the room. What? Renee, where the fuck do you live? This is so unlikely. I fucking love this. Oh my god. Holy shit, Renee. He he, the caribou is beautiful and large. This is so awesome. Renee, I don't know how you do it, but please, never stop. The end. I feel nostalgic for the barbecue scenes in the Fast and Furious movies as if they were from my own life. Duncan is a fucker. Always has been, always will be. And he loves it. This is who I am, baby. This is my one life, and I am ready to die at any moment. That is Duncan's wily persona and attitude toward life. He likes to demonstrate how willing he is to die at any time. He just doesn't remove himself from dangerous situations. One time he drank kerosene. He truly does not care one way or the other. But then, Duncan met Jesse at a Baja Men concert. And for the first time, he thought, I want to stay alive. Well, he liked some of Jesse's personal characteristics. They loved watching TV, but muting the TV and doing voiceovers of the characters. One time, they were doing that, and Jesse had a character say, My dad is a Republican clown. Ha <laughs> ha, please help me. And Duncan had the other character say, No, I hate your dad. He spray-painted my camper with Who is Ron Paul during the 2008 election. And I still don't forgive him. However, I love all humans on Earth, so yes, I will help you. Jesse felt so moved by that. Jesse cried. Duncan said, Hmm, do you want to get married? And Jesse said, Yeah. They were happy for their whole life. When I meditate, it feels like I am practicing to be calm and gentle in daily life. I really like it, and it helps me a lot. Once upon a time, there's a fuckhead named Zack, who's climbing on the top of a mountain. Eventually, God speaks down from a cloud. Hey, Zach, why are you doing that? Zach responds, No reason. I just like fresh air, lol. God is like, K, lol. You like dead clowns, lol? Zach says, <laughs> You're fucked up, God. Yeah, I like them. God says, Check your backpack. Zach starts grinning and says, K. He unzips his backpack. First he sees his cashews and deodorant, his water bottle. Then God says, no, the front pocket, lol. Zach says, lol, K. Okay. He unzips the front pocket of his backpack, and of course he sees 
There is a dead clown's hand in there. Ha ha. Nice. Anyway. Blah, blah. I was looking up horse facts earlier online. The need to continually earn money for food, shelter, etc. makes it very difficult to become the best possible version of yourself. The profit motive is supposedly meant to motivate people to go contribute value to society, but not all forms of value are equally monetizable in our system. I love taking photographs. It means so much to me, lol. Nicola says this while standing in a deep freezer alone in her home. She doesn't have a camera or anything with her. It seems like an absolutely nonsensical statement to make at the time. Without warning, a doctor walks into the freezer, holding a Roomba in his arms and petting it like a cat. Nicola says, Who are you and what are you doing in my deep freeze? The doctor says, I love my Roomba. I'll never go back to manual vacuuming in my life. Nicola says, How long have you had your Roomba? The doctor says, Long enough. Suddenly the doctor draws a pistol from his lab coat, dropping the Roomba to the ground where it smashes. The doc points his gun toward Nicola. Hand over the Chromebook, the doctor says. Hand over my Google Chromebook, I know you have it. Suddenly an explosion hits above. The lights go out. Chunks of the hard ceiling fall to the floor. Nicola evades them. Dust is everywhere. Nicola finds her way to a rare hooded, hidden nook in the deep freeze. Nicola scrambles to pull out her phone. She is breathing hard. She can see her breath in the glow of the screen. She opens up the dating slash hookup app Tinder on her phone. She starts looking through her recent matches. She has a few. Nice. Calculating how big of a tip to give is the easiest thing ever. Shout out to my family and friends. John was 10 year old. Wow, young, lol. John was sitting in the bathtub. The tub was dry and he was eating corn nuts off the floor. I don't know. Fuck off. How am I supposed to know everything about the story? It's John's life, not mine. Why don't you ask him? Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sad about the police, government, and military acting on behalf of the United States and the world. I disagree with almost everything they do and I am worried about the ideologies which allow them to justify their actions to themselves. How did they get those ideas in their head and what other actions could that kind of belief system justify? Now I am worried about the ideology inside of my own head too. I was taught from a young age, I was taught to be a man for example, and I am scared of how this is affecting my view of the world and humans. I have feelings about what is right and wrong in my head, and I don't trust them. I have feelings about what are my favorite things in the world, and I don't trust them. I learned everything from the previous humans, and mostly from the white men who control the media and the schools and the church and the press, and do I really trust them? I don't. Do I really trust them? I don't. Do I really trust them? I don't. And there's an author page with information about me and my links. And then I'm going to read you the back cover as well, which is this th thing I wrote up about the dairy industry. Quit dairy. Cows on dairy farms are impregnated against their will, commonly with an insemination gun and a farmer's arm penetrating them. When these cows give birth, their calf is quickly taken from them, often to be killed and sold as veal, and their milk is collected for human use. Mother cows often cry for days, missing their baby calves. This cycle of forced pregnancy, separation of mother and calf, and milking is the foundation of even organic, grass-fed, and humane dairy farms, not just factory farms. The dairy industry sp spends a, a fortune to promote the idea that cow's milk is healthy for us. But in fact, the animal protein, saturated fat, and cholesterol in cow's milk have been linked to numerous chronic diseases. 
a plant-based diet is generally much healthier for humans, especially a whole foods plant-based diet. For a great overview of those issues, read the book, The China Study. A world without dairy is possible. If your situation allows for it, refuse to consume dairy. Global milk sales are down 12% since 2009, and as more of us explore dairy-free eating, access to non-dairy foods, recipes, and awareness is growing rapidly. We are building the foundation now to achieve a world without dairy. Oppose exploitation everywhere. Ultimately, this is about exploitation. We should oppose confinement and forced labor wherever they exist. Prisons, sweatshops, human trafficking, and many other relationships through it created through capitalism, too. Don't just quit dairy. Commit yourself to ongoing education and resistance against all forms of exploitation. Thank you very much. You can... Um, you just heard the whole book, so you probably don't care about buying it. But if you're interested, it's always for sale at BoostHouse.com. That's Boost-House.com. Thank you for listening.